Martin Campbell. We're good friends. We did GoldenEye together. And we've remained friends ever since. And he said, I've got this movie, Jackie Chan, The Foreigner. I read the script, loved the script, loved Jackie Chan. And that was it. It was as simple as that, really. Brilliant. I mean, we didn't really get a chance to have much of an interaction because his character is tracking me down throughout the film. It's a cat and mouse game. But I'd, I was a huge Jackie Chan fan and still am, even more so now, having worked with the man. Um, just one of these great characters, legends of the cinema. Uh, someone who has got, you know, fantastic comedic timing wonderful alacrity on his feet and for him I think this movie is a great departure and one that will surprise the audiences out there who the fans who love him so uh, yeah we had a good time he brings a humanity an honesty he brings himself he brings all of Jackie's life force to it uh, it's a father who adores his daughter, a man who has given his life for the country that he belongs to, the country that he was torn from. He's an immigrant, he's a foreigner, he's a fish out of water trying to make a new life for himself. And then on one particular day, his life comes crashing in around him and is emotionally devastated and wants to find out who killed his daughter. Very simple. Well, Martin is a taskmaster. He is a man who comes to work fully prepared. He knows the script inside out. He knows every angle that he wants to shoot. So he's a grand master of uh, the thriller and his preparation, as I say, is extensive and he rules the set with a delightful passion of cinematic, uh, what can I say? <laughs> he, he just knows his onions, Martin does. So, and you have to be on your game. You have to come fully prepared, but he's also a most gracious man and takes his time and will, take as much time in the day to get the scene as right as possible and as perfect as possible. So I, I, I adore the fellow and uh, because of GoldenEye, which was such a monumental undertaking all those years ago for him, for myself and for everyone involved, uh, you know, there was a friendship burnished there in that time. And so that's Martin, hopefully we'll go off and do our next film next year. No, it was the same man, just the same commitment, the same passionate artistry and focus and 150% every take. No, not really. <laughs> we were supposed to have dinners at the beginning of the movie, uh, but the schedule was pretty tight and dinners were organized, two were, and two fell apart. And then once the curtain goes up and you start filming, well, I mean, that's it. Your time's not your own, really. And when he wasn't working, he headed back to China to do another movie. Uh, so we never really got to sit and have a glass of wine and break bread and shoot the breeze, but hopefully now with the film coming out and the promotion for the film, we shall get together. But uh, no, I, I really, uh, really have a lot of time for Mr. Chan. Just a great admiration and really proud to have worked with him. I love saying I'm working with Jackie Chan. He always puts a smile on people's faces. And, uh, and when we were on set, you know, I, I, I was in the makeup chair for a while. He'd be in the makeup chair for a while, bruises and prosthetics. And then once you get on set, you know, I, I 
I, I don't talk much to anyone really. I just keep my own counsel and focus at, on the work at hand. So, every now and then there would be a knock on my door and the door would fly open and throw me in Chinese Twinkies. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's trying to fatten me up, I guess. But, um, yes. What else? He was sitting in the makeup trailer one day and he was showing me recordings of his singing. He was very proud of his singing. And so am I, you know. I almost showed him Mamma Mia, but I thought, no, let's leave sleeping dogs lie. Mm. I think it was a joy to go to work every day. You know, when you're working with someone like Martin Campbell and a DP like David Tattersall, uh, who I've worked with so many times now, uh, and I was surrounded by really wonderful actors, or Irish actors, stage actors, great actors on film, and just had a good time making the movie. There wasn't a, you know, I mean, if, every day is a hard day because, but it's, if you love what you do, it's, you know, it's kind of easy breezy. You just know you're going to go into the trenches and the curtain goes up and you have to focus for 12, 14, 16 hours. And it's wonderful just building the movie piece by piece. And you go away and at the end of the day you think, wow, that was, that was good. It's a little moment there and a bit of embroidery here. Um, and see so you slow and, slow and steadily build a piece, build a movie. It's a joy to do. I play the first Irish minister, Liam Hennessy, who is a man with, with a very dark past. And, uh, he's someone who was born of war, really. He grew up in the Troubles in Ireland, and uh, he is very bright, very articulate. Uh, and someone who is trying to hold on to his own position uh, in government and within his own people in the north of Ireland. And so into his office comes this man who he really doesn't have much time for or wants to have, doesn't want to have any time for. And slowly he begins to erode and invade my space. And I want to close him down. And of course it opens a can of worms politically and emotionally for myself and all around me. And, um, so I find out who this fellow is and I realize I've got a, I've got a, a lethal weapon you know, on my hands, someone who, is really, who, who knows how to kill and uh, is relentless in his pursuit of me. Because of my past uh, allegiance with certain forces, and because he was born in Northern Ireland, and he considers himself uh, a soldier who fought for a war and fought for a cause, I also know that Quan is somebody who is uh, extremely well trained in um, terrorism. And so the two forces meet. Well, because politically he's in a very sensitive and gray area of his life, and he wants to hold on to it. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be found out for past uh, indiscretions. He puts a bomb in the lavatory, my office. He comes in. He thinks I have something to do with the, the death of his daughter. He doesn't believe me. He's already found 
out that uh, I was part of an organization which had terrorist connections and that I'm not quite the man I appear to be. And so, to get my attention, tries to blow me up and slowly, you know, uh, take out my man force. Just one heck of a good ride, one great thriller. And to see two characters like Quan and Hennessy go toe to toe and to watch the, the unraveling of uh, two men's lives. Hey, Vale here with some cool movie facts on the efforts some actors go to to create the characters they play. For the role of Roger Kint, Kevin Spacey glued his fingers together in the film The Usual Suspects to give his left hand the feeling of paralysis. To prepare for his role in the film The Mask of Zorro, Antonio Banderas practiced with the Olympic fencing team in Spain for four months. Natalie Portman, for the role as Nina Sayers in Black Swan, trained with former New York City ballet dancer Mary Helen Bowers for up to eight hours a day, six days a week for over a year ahead of shooting the film. Adrian Brody, for his role in The Pianist, gave up his apartment, sold his car and moved to Europe with only two bags, so he could get familiar with his character's discomfort. He also went on a crash diet and lost 30 pounds in six weeks, weighing 130 pounds at his lightest during shooting. Whoa. Okay, so if you want to watch more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you receive the videos the moment they are online. Bye bye.